Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13. This week we're going to start looking at implementing our player's attack. The actual result of what we're going to implement is fairly straightforward. We're going to press the shift key, the player is going to do a little swinging uh, slash attack. We detect if anything is hit by it and you know they get hit. But the way we're going to build it is going to be fairly modular and flexible and is pretty much wholly based on the melee attacks tutorial. I did a little while back. So if you've already seen that, a lot of this is going to be more or less the same. In that it's going to be built in such a way that will show us how to um, build combos and different types of attacks, as well as just the, the, the regular one swing. The only one we're actually going to implement is the, the, the one swing slash attack, but we're going to build it in the same sort of structure that would allow us, if you wanted to, to add you know follow-up combo chain attacks and stuff like that, or different kinds of attacks that are activated in different ways. But for this week's episode, we're going to keep it fairly simple, and we're just going to get the animation kicked off. Okay, so we're going to press the button, perform the animation, return to the free state. Before anything else, I'm going to add the sprite that we're going to be animating. So I'm going to create a new sprite. Important from this folder if you're using my assets, uh, it's s player attack slash underscore strip 16. All right, um, there's a couple of these that do for uh, hit boxes and stuff like that. We'll we'll come into them next episode, um, but for now we just need this one s player attack slash underscore strip 16. Bring that in, and you can see it's like a much wider uh, sprite than we used to because I needed to give myself lots of space to create these uh, these different swinging attacks. Actually, I'm not sure why there's that much space off to the left. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's a quirk of when I originally animated it. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, we can go ahead and put the um, origin point in the same point it usually is. Um, I can't remember if it's on the black line. Yeah, it is. Uh, that pixel. Um, so yeah, as long as the origin lines up to where it is on the other thing, it doesn't really matter how big or wide these are, because all that transparency gets trimmed away anyway. But as you can see, it's just, you know, animated the, the same way as everything else. Um, this is, I think, what, 16 frames? Uh, divide that by 4 is obviously 4, so and you can see each uh, swing in each direction is 4 frames long. And in the same direction, so right up, left, and down, as per usual. All right. Uh, go ahead and name that, so that's going to be S player uh, attack slash, and basically any types of attacks that we have will be S player attack something, right, if you want to bring in more of those at a later date. All right, so now we're going to expand our state machine by adding another script, so I'm going to do a script, right click, and make a new script. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, as I've said before, um, I suppose if you haven't worked all this out by now, um, you, you're probably still stuck like five episodes back. But <laughs> uh, as from what YoYo Games have already announced about the changes coming to uh, Game Maker, chances are we no longer use scripts as functions, but rather to simply contain functions, right? Um, so whenever I say in the tutorial series, I'm going to make a new script, uh, chances are if you're watching this from the future in a new version of Game Maker, you might instead want to interpret that as make a new function, all right, somewhere in your scripts. But for now, scripts are our functions, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. I know I keep saying that, and I'll probably stop now, as I say, because uh, if you haven't worked that out yet, you're probably not going to. But uh, it's important for me to try and future-proof my videos as best as I possibly can, which is uh, a limited amount. But anyway, a new script slash function uh, called player state attack. All right, and I'm going to group these up together as well. Uh, one one advantage that we'll have actually uh, when we finally get those GML changes is that uh, grouping up our, our state machine will be as simple as having a, a script called state machine, I guess, um, and all of the state functions uh, will go into that one GML file uh, rather than uh, just having a folder full of these. Not that I necessarily think that's a bad way of organizing it, but. Uh, uh, it's helpful to have more more ways to organize these kind of things. Anyway, um, actually, let's bring bring player collision and player animate sprite out of there as they are technically not um, part of the state machine. And we we'll close that. Oh, well, we should rename that actually player state machine, right? Uh, to distinguish, because you might wonder why I didn't write just state free, state roll, state bonk, state attack might help distinguish from these other scripts, um, but 
the reason for that is because it's not just our player that will have a state machine. We'll be doing that with enemies and so on later on. Anyway, <laughs> back to the matter at hand. Player state attack. This is actually going to be a very, very, very short function. Uh, it's only actually going to do one thing. And it's going to <laughs> run a, a sub state machine, if you will, for whatever attack we want to carry out. So I'm going to write script execute open bracket state attack. All right. And this allows us to do exactly what we already do in the player uh, when we come to here and we, we execute our state machine. Uh, so we'll go into our state machine and if we're in the attack state, uh, we're going to execute whatever um, sub attack state we're in, whatever state or whatever is in state attack, which is currently nothing. Um, so let's make sure we add that to the player. Let's go to the create event and just under state so that they're together state and state attack uh, is going to equal um, uh, basically the script for whatever attack it is we're carrying out. And that's what kind of allows us to call multiple different types of attacks. Um, the, attack, the only attack we're actually going to build in for this is going to be called uh, attack slash uh, semicolon. Obviously that won't, that won't turn yellow yet, but we'll make a new script um, called attack slash and we'll, we'll name all our attacks like this so it'll just be called attack whatever the name is at the end of it um i'll say we're only actually going to have one attack in here but I'll, I'll create a blank script as well just to show you kind of you know, like attack spin and uh, and so on and so forth we, we'd have a whole bunch and that's where we'd actually carry out the unique um elements of our uh, different attacks we don't need to put anything in those right away uh because first of all we want to have a way to actually get into the attack state okay um, we've set up sort of the framework there for you know what should be executed if we are in the attack state but um, we don't actually have a way to get there so let's go into the free state uh, come down to like where we have our activate key logic we also have um, key attack you might remember uh, that's what something we defined in the step event when we got all our player inputs uh, we defined this ages ago key attack key press shift and so we can now check that and I'll may as well comment that as well. Uh, attack key logic. So if the attack key is pressed and we are in the free state, uh, we just want to go to the attack state. So I'm going to do state equals player state attack and uh, states attack equals attack slash. All right, so now when we press uh, the attack key, we set up the state uh, that we're going to go into and the um, the kind of sub state that we want to go into there. What's nice about this, you might wonder like, well, why not just have like an individual state for each type of attack, right? Why go into one state where all it, literally all it does is call uh, another script? Why not just have those scripts and just, you know, uh, do them as part of the state machine? Um, and that's a valid way to do it as well. But the issue you might run into there is that quite often, in this game, we use our state machine to you know tell what state our player is in and be able to um, tell if certain things should affect the player or what uh, what should um, happen in various different circumstances. And it might be very important for us to tell like is the player in uh, is it currently performing an attack? And rather than then check if state equals attack slash or attack spin or attack so on and so forth, we can just confirm that the player is in the attack state. And it's just the same kind of logic for you know why we use parenting and inheritance for, for various different objects and so on. All right, so now let's finally actually come into attack slash and uh, set up um, the animation that we want to happen. So the first thing we want to do when we start performing an attack um, is check to see if we've just started this attack. And the way we can do that is to check to see if our sprite matches whatever this attack should be. So the first thing in attack slash is going to be if sprite index does not equal s player attack slash, um, that means you know we've only just come here. So if that's the case, first of all, we want to you know make that condition true. Uh, sprite uh, index equals s player attack slash. Uh, and then set local frame to equal zero as we always do when we change our animation and image index to equal zero so that we're starting from the beginning of that attack. You might wonder why don't we do this just when um, 
we are in the free state. Like, why don't we do it here? We're just when we press the attack key. The reason we don't do that is because um, those changes that we make there are, you know, we are still in the free state. So we're still carrying out an entire free state. And we're only actually going to start performing this stuff uh, and calling these scripts on the next frame, okay, after we press key attack. If you really wanted it to start happening instantly, I suppose you could go ahead and then like you know, script execute in here and actually go ahead and start the attack. But um, to, to keep things just clear and simple for me, I like to, to understand the flow of my game very clearly. Um, I just have it so it's, you know, it sets up state, state attack and then finishes off that uh, free state and then goes into uh, these attacks on the next frame. So if we were to do like image index equals zero, local frame equals zero here, we would basically have one frame of just like the free state where we're, I guess, facing to the right on the, the first frame of the idle um, animation. Um, and then we would go into the attack. So you'd see kind of a weird flicker every time you did an attack. All right, so that's why we do that. Um, back in attack slash. So if we've just arrived in the attack state, um, we've just arrived in attack slash for the first time, um, we set our sprite accordingly, then uh, we want to animate as we usually do. So update sprite, and we can literally just call that function again, player animate sprite, which will animate us. Hopefully, and I, I know I've said this before, but hopefully now you are starting to see where, you know, we set up things like player animate sprite um, and then we just get to reuse them over and over throughout the game, saves us loads and loads of time. Then once we are animating, the other nice thing about the script is you'll remember we set it up to tell us if an animation has ended uh, by getting this animation end equals true or animation end equals false uh, set up in the player. So that means we can then make use of that immediately after calling that function and say if animation end uh, state equals player state free let me go on and animation end equals false so that that variable is ready for the next time we need it and that's all there is to it so i think it's probably going to kind of be in here or maybe in here like where we do um uh the actual logic for the attack itself landing on things and uh the hitbox and for that um next episode we'll actually make uh probably another generic function that's just called like attack calculate or something like that that we can then call from all of the attacks um, to calculate based on their hitbox that you know, I'll bring in and explain next time uh, which things we've hit. So we'll kind of have a flow of going from the player to uh, our attack state script, which then calls uh, whichever unique attack we are in, which kind of controls the flow of the animation and um, whether or not we can kind of cancel out of that animation or you know whether we can you know go from one attack to another and it just controls you know which uh, attack animation we're playing and so on and then from those uh into the uh attack calculate which tells us if we hit anything all right so that's the kind of flow of our attack and you never know maybe one of those attacks wants to do something totally unique and have a different attack calculation that it can do itself you know that's We've given ourselves a lot of freedom to build this uh, um, system however we want, even though for the purposes of just you know what we're building, we're actually only going to have this one attack. It's always nice. It, it doesn't really take too much extra work on our part to have set it up this way, and it gives us a lot of flexibility for the future if we do want to add more complicated stuff to our attacks. Anyway, let's run this now and just make sure it all works and I haven't screwed anything up. So if I press the shift key now, I go into the attack state, I do one swing, one playthrough of that animation in the correct direction because that's all handled by player animate sprite. And then we return to the free state immediately afterwards. And you see we can't move during it. And so on. That might be another thing. Maybe you want to have one that you can move in between so you know you can add all that into those specific attacks and let them do whatever you want to. Maybe you're swinging a hammer that you've picked up or something like that. Maybe you have a unique attack state for when that is a thing. Either way, it gives us a lot of flexibility. Okay, I know this one was kind of short in terms of stuff we did, but I thought it was important to have a video where we specifically talked about the structure of the attack system. And then we can get into the nitty gritty of, you know, calculating collisions and hitboxes and stuff like that next time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Catch you all next time. Here are my Patreon supporters. They are all great.
Without them, I wouldn't be able to keep making this work, so thank you to them, and a particular thanks, in no particular order, to the following. Bowser the Dog, Zenan May, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Zephyr Flame, Daka Dondigo, Max M, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Do What Doobie, T Lesson, Jason, James Siggins, James L. Anderson, Hare, Hyungjin, Rupinder, Rene Dam, Scott Matthews, Leo, Pixel Mush, Tyler Hubble, Maria Celeste Oliveira Frailing, Cabbage Pants, Vil Vertinen, Gilberto Cisneros, Figgy, Mark Burgess, John Harwood, Zach Collett, Goose, Caleb Franklin, and Troy Mera. Thank you all very much for your support, and thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you guys next time.